Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Boston Balling. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlba. It's been another uh, good week for me. I hope everyone had a great weekend. Um, holiday weekend coming up this weekend, so I hope people have fun plans for this weekend. I hope the weather pans out for everybody planning on doing stuff outside for Fourth of July weekend. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, hope everyone else you know, does too. And let's pray for no rain in any of your areas and that people can just enjoy their holiday weekend. Um, I'm excited to kick off another episode for you guys. Um, I am honored to be joined by a really good friend of mine. He's a fantastic guest. He's been on the show before. He's making his reappearance on Boston Balling, has his own podcast. I've been a guest on his show. Courtney Harden, how are you doing tonight? Hey, Gabby, I'm Boston Ballin'. <laughs> I'm back. Thank you for the invite. It's always a pleasure to, uh, when, when I get the invite from you, I'm like, yes, let's do it. This is find a date, find a time. I'm always down, always game for to talk sports with you. So I'm, I'm honored always to, to be a part of the show. So thanks, thanks once again. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for coming on. I, al I always enjoy our conversations. I feel like we always have really good conversations when we're on yeah. each other's shows. So this is great. Yes, it is. It's always good. Good time. Uh, like I said, just amongst friends, just talking in the podcast space. And uh, but beyond that, we talk off, you know, we talk off camera, too, all the time. So um, it's, it's like I said, just good friends, just almost like having it like you know good friends having a drink and and and, and watching sports and talking sports that's what, that's what it's like so we just do it virtually <laughs> yeah it's so true it's, it's so true we just have our casual conversations virtually yeah. like it's a good way to put it yeah right, like, I guess right. we're sitting in a bar but not really yeah right <laughs> yes yeah um, so. <laughs> but yeah i hope you're doing well happy to have you back on um lots to talk about in this episode um nba free agency starting on thursday so we're going to touch on that um, in a little bit. But before we kind of get started with that, why don't you just give everybody a little overview of your show, what your show is about, and uh, how we got started? Yeah, definitely. Uh, just the, you know, the real deal with Courtney Harden. Um, it started back, I mean, 2015, 2014, 2015. So I've been doing this for about a good eight years, seven, eight years. And uh, it, it's been rebranded since then. So I, I rebranded in 2019. So I would say the rebrand has been a couple of years now. But uh, yeah, it's been, you know, mostly sports. But I've had a bunch of, you know, a lot of different people from a lot of different genres, you know, not just sports. I've had authors on the show, I have writers, uh, had chefs before on the show. Uh, so we talk, we kind of get into a little bit of everything and everything. I always have guests almost on every week. Uh, so yeah, you can find it on all social media, pla all podcast platforms. You can also follow it at get the real deal on Twitter, uh, BS3 network. That's the network itself. BS3 network.com. It's on Roku. Uh, like I said, it's on Spotify, Google play. So yeah, if you just download, uh, if you just, you know, download and, uh, you know, search the real deal with Courtney Harden, you can find all the episodes. I mean, every single one that I've done, uh, especially over the last few years. Yeah, I feel like with how much experience you have doing it, it must be so cool to just see over the years how much the show has grown and yeah. and just you know just how much you've been able to really do with it. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, definitely, it has grown. I would say since 2014, 2015, it's definitely has grown from there. Uh, I feel like I'm, I hope I'm much better than I was when I first started. You know, <laughs> so uh, I mean, I'm more comfortable now. And then. Like, you know, you know, when you put your name out there on something, you want people to gravitate to it or at least listen to it uh, and everything, too. And then you start to get some type of, you know, people to to want to come on the show. So now that I reach out to to a lot of the guests, they, you know, I have there's a name to it at least. So so, the, yeah, so the show's basically just that I just try to get the guests to come on, tell their story, have a conversation, kind of like what we do all the time. And just to have fun. And that's what it's about. I always say it's not an interview type of show. It's yeah. a casual conversation show. And it's uh, it's like the title. So it's giving you the real deal. So I want to hear people's stories. I want to hear people. They have something to promote. They have like they have a hot take if they want to just come on and answer questions or just to argue and debate. I, you know, I, I try to leave, I put, put, put that platform out there. And that's what that's what the show is really about. 
Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And just because everybody's stories are so unique and different and the types yeah. of people that you bring on the show all do different things and specialize in different things. And it's cool to kind of hear their path and how they got started with what they're doing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like I said, it's I've had, like I said, I've had chefs, I have authors, I have writers. Uh, I have people we, we talk about uh, comic books when movies come out and the comic book movies. I'm a big, huge fan of the Marvel's uh, cinematic MCU. Um, so I'll have shows about that. Uh, but at the end, it's center, it does center around sports for the most part. because That's what it's about. And we talk about everything from NBA to NFL to uh, boxing to UFC, whatever sports is, whatever's the sports that topic is big. We talk about it and we even get sometimes get to serious topics when it needs to be addressed and things like that. But yeah, it's, it's, I'm having, I'm still having a lot of fun doing it. And, I, and there's so much more. Um, to expand on and more guests, you know, that I want that I want to definitely get on the show. So yeah, yeah, but yeah, just like I said, just if you Google the real deal with Courtney Hardy, you can catch all the content uh, there. Yeah, everyone definitely should check it out. It's a great show. I really enjoy listening to it. I enjoy the guests that he brings on um, too. So I definitely recommend everybody check that out on any podcast platform, like he said, or social media platforms as well. Um, so yeah, The Real Deal with Courtney Harden, definitely a fantastic job. So I definitely keep that up. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. You're welcome. Um, yeah. So I know we briefly talked about this. I mean, a lot going on in the NBA right now. Um, it's the off season now, free agency starting on Thursday. You and I briefly touched on this um, when I did an Instagram live after the NBA finals ended. Um, but for me, you know, being a Celtics fan, um, I can't help but be happy and proud of the season that they put together because yeah. a lot of people would not have picked them to go to the finals. They're still a young team, a first year head coach. The odds were not exactly on their side in terms of going to the finals yeah. and Golden State. They're facing a Golden State team that has the experience and they've done this before. They, they know what it's like to win the whole thing. And I think it was a good exposure for the Celtics to be right. able to have that opportunity to be there this year. And they can grow from that. So I kind of wanted to just get your thoughts overall on, um, you know, that NBA Finals, um, Celtics Warriors, and just kind of overall the Celtics surprising people and getting there. Yeah, I mean, we'll start with the Celtics on their side. It was a surprise that they, they got there. Um, but... You know, they we talked throughout the season how their season got turned around around mid season a uh, lot this year, yeah. and they started to they then they started to click, started to win, and they were putting a, this they they went on this historic run um, towards the end of the year and in the season and heading into the playoffs. So heading to the playoffs, they were one of the one of the favorites actually. I mean, you know, you had Miami, you had Milwaukee. Uh, maybe those two, and, and even Brooklyn, even even the, the series with Brooklyn, a lot of people picked, so there was a lot of people that picked Brooklyn over Boston because they thought, oh, okay, Kyrie's back, and I know we're going to get into all that. So Kyrie's back, and then KD, okay, maybe Brooklyn's going to beat Boston. I'm like, okay, that's a lot of disrespect for Boston. I didn't think Boston was going to sweep them. I thought Boston was going to win maybe in seven against Brooklyn. I think a sweep, but when Boston swept Brooklyn, the way they did, I'm like, okay, they they they're more scared than people are giving them credit for and everything too. So, and then they went on and they beat the they beat last year's champs, they beat the Bucks, and then they beat the number one seed Miami Heat, and then they 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 took the Warriors to six, so they lost six goals. As, to me, it was a a successful year for the Celtics. Maybe said a surprise year uh, for them. Uh, a lot of players have stepped up: Tatum, Brown, Marcus Smart. He was defensive player of the year. So the heart and soul of that team, and then Robert Williams, who was playing injured for most of the season, at that least half fun. the season, he 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 showed up, and then Al Horford had some moments and everything too. So it was a great, great uh, year for uh, uh, Udoka, first year head coach, and to to turn that that ship around like he did. Um, they were under five hundred at one point, and then they were struggling. They couldn't find an identity. They didn't know like maybe they should trade. Brown or Tatum or somebody, and then they they said no, we got we're gonna keep this nucleus together, and they had a so they had a successful year, um, even though not winning the finals. But you said they ran into the Golden State Warriors, experienced team, uh, they were hungry, so they were very hungry to get back to the finals. Uh, Curry, you could tell just the way he the way he played throughout the year and the way they started the season. They were eighteen and two, and this was out Clay when they started the season, <laughs> so uh, yeah. it. it 
you know, it just showed like, okay, they had a great start. Then the injuries crept up for them, but they, they stayed, they, they stayed right in that two, three seed in the West. And I said, okay, all they got to do is just get healthy, get back together. And that's what they did. So their, their culture always is, is key. They had their big three with Steve Kerr, uh, and Iguodala coming back and, and, and they just had they had a nice young nucleus. They had veterans, so the Warriors had a had a tremendous year. And uh, but for those both teams, they could actually go back again next year. I, I would not be I would not be shocked if there's another Celtics Warriors uh, finals uh, next season. Yeah, I mean, it, even the young players, like you said, like players like Jordan Poole, yeah. who really stepped up for Golden State, in a, a, not not really just in the postseason, but all year this year, but especially right. in the in the playoffs, um, players like that, that was key for them too, you know, and having being able to, like you said, have them mixed with the veterans who are used to being in that spot, yeah. um, you know. It would have been tough, a tough series for the Celtics to win. I think, you know, losing game four at home was really was tough. Yeah. Um, I think that kind of is ultimately what did it um, for them. I think they would have had to win that game at home in order to stick with it and kind of at least force game seven out of Golden State. But right. looking back on it, I mean, yeah, that first half of the season for the Celtics was rough. And and it's we all like we all knew that they could play better basketball than that. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, oh, like Udoka's not the guy, like he should get fired. You know, and I was like, let's give the guy some time. It's his first year as a head coach. Right. He's still getting acclimated with working with these players and this team. You know, they were so used to Brad Stevens. And now I was like, okay, let, let's let's give him a chance. Let's just see what he can do with this team and these players. And that turnaround that really started around New Year's just they just went uphill from there and they just started having fun with it and they were playing a lot better basketball and the fact that he was able to do that and turn that team around is really impressive and I think you know as a Celtics fan yes it's disappointing that they came so far again but fell short but overall I can take away from that that they have such a bright future and now they all know what that feeling of going to the finals is like yes and I think that experience that and it you know it You've watched you you've watched basketball for a long time yourself. It's hard to get back there. It's gonna be hard. It, the, the East is gonna be so improved next season. Yep. Uh, and the Celtics, you know, they the, the teams that they beat, they they went through a gauntlet. We we talked about this on your Instagram live. They went through a gauntlet of teams in the East. So the East is only gonna get better at you know next season. But the Celtics have they have the pieces to do. I mean, they they had they had such a they, their their team defensively was so so good, like it was just, it was like historically good. That's how good they were defensively. I mean, they were good on all phases of the game. They they, they were good. They were good on the perimeter. They were good, you know, in, on the back end with Robert Williams. So like their starting five was was all good defensively. <laughs> so you don't yeah. see that all much. You don't see that often in you know uh, for teams. Maybe the Bucks. And uh, you know, Golden State to to an extent, you know. So that's about it. That that are so good defensively. Now, like I said, offensively they had their struggles, and I think that's what got exposed. Yep. Against the Warriors, because um, the Warriors are a good defensive team too. But the Warriors, they yeah, they do have Steph Curry, they do have Clay Thompson, they do have offensive weapons. But the Celtics' depth. I think that's what that was there. So that's what I think they would go into this off season thinking, okay, we got to get better. We got to get another ball handler that could get us in our office and some all more office of firepower. Because I think once Tatum who struggled in this playoff, I mean, this finals, he really did yes. struggle yeah. uh, the turnovers and um, not taking advantage of the mismatches that he was, that he had uh, really. And he just really struggled with his, you know, struggled and Jalen Brown played well, I think Mark Smart has some good games, but it just goes to show like they got stagnant a little bit, and the Warriors took advantage of that. Those, especially those like I said, Game Four, especially Game Four, uh, that was the game. Yeah, Curry had forty three, so that was the game that he took over. And then Game Five, they struggled when Curry was struggling. That was the game they could have they could have got too, but they didn't get down. And, and I I figured once Golden State got that three two lead, maybe it would have went to seven, but. It was it was probably it was over like you said after game four, uh, more than likely. But yeah, they they but they, they this is a tremendous year. They'll they'll just have to like I said they got the culture, they they have it so they're building something. So I hope they they'll, they'll definitely be they'll be in the mix next year. 
Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, the turnovers obviously really killed them. Yeah. Missing a lot of free throws also killed mm. them, too. In a lot of those games, you'd have players like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum not making their free throws, which is another thing that I think was an issue. But I look at some of that stuff as, you know, them being young again, and they're making these mistakes that Golden State wasn't making. And I think a lot of this stuff is fixable, and they're going to go into next season, like you said, and they have that culture, you know, this team – works well together. People were really understanding how to fall into their role. And they also have some bench players that really were able to step up and contribute and get those minutes this year. Yeah. Some of the younger bench players. And I think that's going to be huge for them going into next season. When you look at players like Pete and Pritchard and Grant Williams, who are still on the younger side and were coming off the bench and able to get that exposure and contribute, I think is going to be huge for them going forward as well. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's, that's like, they said that's part of the nucleus and, and Rob Williams, like, he was like you say, he was playing on one leg, <laughs> really. Poor I mean, guy. He, yes, <laughs> he's out there. He's out there battling, and he and he he was he was such a terror, uh, especially in the finals. Like the guys couldn't even drive to. Like, they had to get him on a on an angle. Like they had to get him on a mismatch. But if he's standing right in the middle of the, of the paint, he's blocking shots. Like he was blocking everybody's shots from Curry's <laughs> to Clay. They couldn't get into the paint. They could not get into. The, he's that he's that good defensively. He's at that Rudy Gobert in, in that regard, in that defensive uh, mindset that he has, you're not going to score on him cost consistently like that. So in the words of figuring it out, they're like, okay, we got to get him off pick and roll and get him moving. But he can move. And can you imagine with him having, you know, being healthy, having both legs healthy? Like, I know. He's going to be – yeah, if they get a healthy Rob Williams back and get him back and, they, like I said, they do bring their nucleus back, uh, all together. I know there's been rumors about maybe Marcus Smart being, you know, wanting to get traded, maybe, but that was what the whole Bradley Beal rumors. I was going to ask you that now since you talk about the Celtics. Yep. I don't know. I mean, Brad, they, they talk about Bradley Beal is going to take the money and, and stay with the Wizards, but if you had a chance, would you, if, if you had a chance and there was a rumor, Bradley Beal's on the, if he's out there, you get a chance to get him, would you trade Marcus Smart to get Bradley Beal? I think I would. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would. And I the reason I say that is because I think obviously defensively, he was tremendous. He was the defensive player of the year, but there's a lot of good defensive players on that team. Yes. Yeah, I right. think from an offensive standpoint and needing somebody to fall into that true point guard spot, I think um, he's still getting there. And so I think if the opportunity presented him presented itself, to include him in a trade package for Bradley Beal, I think at the time it probably would make sense for the Celtics. I do. I agree with that too. And, and uh, I was talking about this on my show last, uh, Saturday. We were talking about, you know, Bradley Beal just before reports came out that he might be resigning with the, uh, with the Wizards. But we were talking about Beal maybe going to Boston. And then they said, well, it had to be for Piper Mark Smart and, uh, and other, other things. But and I know some Celtics fans are like, oh no, we got to keep Marcus Smart. He's been the heart and soul. Definitely, he he is. Uh, but like I said, the office did get a little stagnant. And you said he's learning the point guard position and what he brings. But you're right, Brown Tatum, they they're good defensive. Grant Williams, they're good defensive. They're they're a good defensive team. It would be a little step back because of Smart, but offensively, getting a Bradley Beal would be just beyond take them to the. I think it would take them right over the top. So. But I don't know if they're going to get the opportunity to get um, Bradley Beal. I guess we'll have to wait and see if Beal actually is going to resign with the with Washington. I know he's torn, and he's good friends with Tatum, so we'll yeah. see. We'll see what we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't be surprised if he decides to stay. Yeah. I think um, you know, I think that's a, a, he's comfortable there. But at the same time, if anybody can convince him to leave, it might be Jason Tatum. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, I think I think that's a good way to put it. I think um, offensively, that would be huge because that's still where I see the biggest holes for the Celtics is on the mm. offensive side of the ball because the defense obviously was tremendous this year. And yes, Marcus Smart not having him for his defense would be a step back. But I mean, other players were really stepping up defensively this year too. And yeah. so I think they could make that work. That core that they have now, though, that brought them to the finals, you don't want to mess with that chemistry too much. So part of me is thinking, you know, when it comes to free agency and this Celtics team right now, going for more depth pieces and, and adding some size, I think could be the best way to go for them. Because I don't think I can't really see 
Brad Stevens wanting to really separate a lot of that core that they have now that just right. got them to the finals because you don't really want to mess with the chemistry too much between them and um, Ime Udoka. So I feel like when they approach free agency this year, it's going to be a lot of um, depth pieces and hopefully going for some more size because that can't really hurt for them right now either. That's so true. Yeah, and I think that's their needs is we talk about the ball handling. I think they still need a another ball handler because then if they do keep I mean, I think they're gonna keep their core. Um, so it's just, because they don't have they don't really they don't really have the cap space to really make a, a move unless they make some trades. But I think it's more bench scoring, depth, and ball handling playmaking. So uh those I think those will be the needs I, I believe the Celtics would would need because he said they don't really need much because they 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 got to the finals so they don't really need too much they just gotta they gotta re- they probably have to go deeper into the free agent pool to find some a veteran playmaker ball handler and then uh, uh, some more bench um scoring from from there as well yeah, I mean, I know the name Otto Porter Jr. has been thrown yeah. around associated with the Celtics, and I actually wouldn't hate that move because he can. Do, he's a he's a really multifaceted player. Like he'll be mm-hmm. a really good addition defensively if he came here, and I think obviously um, offensively he could be good off the bench. Like he's not really somebody that I I think would be you know starting by any means, but I think from a depth standpoint, like we talked about, he could be somebody that could fill some of those holes that they're looking for. I think, you know, he, and he's a veteran, obviously he has the experience so that it can never hurt to add veteran presence, especially if you want to make another finals run. Um, I think somebody like that is is the type of moves that we are looking at in terms of the Celtics Um, with free agency right now, somebody like him, I could see being just a really, really good addition to like the second unit and maybe getting some starting minutes when it comes to injuries um, and things like that. But I don't really see a lot of cons to adding somebody like him. No, not at all. I think um, adding somebody like Otto Porter who just had a, he, I mean, he played a, he played a very good role with the Warriors and they put him in the starting lineup because uh, you know, I think it was in game three. Two, yeah, three. They made the adjustment. Steve Kerr made the adjustment because the Celtics, how big they. I mean, they he tried to downsize, um, and and it worked. It, it did work. The Celtics were so they're, they're big. They were they were a big team, big physical team. So he said, I'm, "Let me just add someone like I said a, a, a versatile wing like Otto Porter. Let's put him in the lineup." along with Wiggins and Curry and, and Draymond and Clay. So they downsized and it it did it helped. I mean it helped the it helped the Warriors. So he made that adjustment. So but like I said Al Porter could bring some veteran uh you know he's he's a he's a guy that can hit shots, plays some deep solid defense, uh doesn't need a ball in his hands to make an impact really. So he could hit he'll hit he'll hit those jump shots, them open shots where Tatum and Brown can create and kick it out to him. So yeah, I think that's a that's a really good move. I heard Patty Mills too could be a uh could could be uh you know him and uh uh Yudoka's got that connection uh from San Antonio. So um when he was the assistant coach there. So that could be somebody a veteran. He still put he still could put up numbers a, a veteran guy that can can handle the ball, can shoot, got championship experience as well. So he's another one. So it's gonna probably be guys like that like that back end uh, for the Celtics, I think to, to just to, just to keep building. Yeah. Patty Mills. I mean, that's another interesting name being thrown around too. We, we still don't know what his situation is either, you know, what, what kind of decision he's going to make, but right. I think that could be another interesting um, choice as well. And like you said, I think it would just be somebody that could just add to kind of that depth and fill some of those holes because they don't really need some, you know, um, starter immediate impact type of players really because you really kind of do have that solid core now yeah. solidified um but you know we have to start thinking about people like al horford who's nearing the end of his contract yeah um grant williams is going to be a free agent um in the next couple years as well um so you know it can't it really can't hurt to add more to that depth in the bench right now um so I want to keep an eye on both of those names because I think either one could fit in well in Boston. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. I think it's uh could be could be those type of players. Uh I was just looking at some of the others. They think Kyle Anderson from Memphis. Oh, I mean, yeah. He's he's a guy that can, you know, he's not the best outside shooter, but um 
he could he could fit right in. He's a he's a six nine, can handle the ball. They did their names like that. Nicholas Batum. I mean, that name is always yeah, floating the, around. That yeah. seems like that's a, a really heavy possibility that he yeah. might end up in Boston. Right, yeah, from the Clippers. And he's a he's a glue guy. He's a guy that could just come in and hit shots and make and 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 play solid defense. Like he's still uh versatile enough to do all those things. And he's been in the league a long time. So but he would help, he would be a natural fit. And I know that I know Celtics are strong interest in in uh in Nicholas Batum. So those are some of the names I, I did see uh, reported that Celtics could be interested in. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what they do. I mean, I know they'll definitely probably make a move or two. I don't think it's going to be anything really huge. And I don't think it should be because I don't want to, a lot of these players, I don't want to break them up uh, uh, and kind of jeopardize that chemistry that they had yeah. in terms of going to the finals. I just think it's adding a couple small pieces that could really put them over the top. Cause we know, like you said, they have the capability now with this team as it stands now to get back to the finals. But if they can just add a couple pieces because the Eastern conference is going to be good once again. So adding a couple yeah. pieces that could really help put them over the edge, I think is what Brad Stevens is going to be looking at. Yeah, I, I agree. And you just said the East is going to be – this is before any moves are being made. The East is, is so top-heavy. I mean, Miami's still going to – they're going to be good. And the Bucs, uh, like I said, Middleton, when he was he was out, uh, they, they, they're, right, they're right there in the mix. And people said if Middleton was healthy, maybe they do beat the Celtics. I mean, we don't know. We, we can't, really t- can't really say. I mean, they still went to seven games, so <laughs> we just don't really know without <laughs> Middleton. So, so they got the Bucs, they got the Bulls. I think they'll be, they'll be improved, especially if they re-sign Zach Levine. Uh, and the, the Sixers just don't know what to expect out of them. Uh, they could be. And you never really be, know with them. You never know with them. You never know with Brooklyn. I mean, that's been the talk of the last week. You know, yeah. just don't yeah. know how – if they're going to be, they, they still should be good. And uh, the Cavaliers, I mean, there, there's so many teams in the East um, and that, you know, that Celtics are going to have to contend with, but I think the Celtics are in a good, good spot to, to, to repeat, to get back to the conference, to at least get to the back to the conference finals. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And I mean, like you just said, another team I definitely did want to want to talk about is Brooklyn because mm. they've kind of been the talk of the NBA yeah. uh, since this finals has ended because there's just a lot going on with that team right now. The KD situation, the Kyrie situation, everything's kind of a mess in Brooklyn right now. And yeah. Nets fans are kind of losing it and having meltdowns on Twitter. <laughs> whole situation. Yeah. I mean, So Kyrie did decide to opt into his contract with Brooklyn, which isn't that shocking, really, because there was no way he was going to leave that much money on the table, I feel like. But yet, even still, as of today, there are still rumors that there is still a possibility that he could be traded to the Lakers. Um, What are your thoughts on the Nets right now? Oh, my goodness. Like you said, it's a mess over there. And and it's it's Kyrie Irving, like. You know, you, you've had a front row seat with Kyrie Irving for a few yep. for a few years, and yeah. the things that there's always something there's always something with him. There's always some some type of drama, some type of you know his decision making, him not showing up and yeah. participating. Yeah. There's there's always something. It's always somebody else's fault, but not his, and everything too. I think him opting in, I'm not surprised either because it's like what 38 million. Yeah, that he, like he that. would have walked away from that much. Yeah, money. 38 million. So if he was going to go to the Lakers, and the, and then that's why I think Brooklyn they they called his bluff. Like Brooklyn said, we have the leverage. You either going to opt in or you find a trade. You find a trade partner that we can do. The Lakers were the only team that showed interest. So I think that was a blow to Kyrie's ego. I really do because. There was teams that he wanted to, you know, he he wanted to go to like the Clippers or or I think it was Clippers, Miami, Philly. There was a few other teams, but nobody showed interest. Nobody showed strong interest because they didn't want the drama. <laughs> so so yep. Kyrie thought like, well, if I could go to the Lakers, if I don't opt in, I go to the Lakers, I can only play for six million. I'm not gonna leave a lot of that. I'm not gonna leave 38 million off the table. Yeah, that like, would just be be foolish. Yeah, it'd be yeah. foolish. Like, who come on, yeah, yeah, who would do that? Now I know he did you know, only playing 29 games with the vaccine, the, you know, the vaccine yeah. mandate. I mean, yeah, he thought I think it was 18 million. It was some, it was 16, 18 million that he did. He did not get from last, this past season, but 30 something million, you have an opt-in clause. You, you did, you better, you better opt in. And so I think he had no other decision because 
and even with the Lakers, what package were they going to give Brooklyn? Brooklyn said they weren't interested in West. So they weren't interested in Westbrook. They're not interested in yeah. whatever the Lakers have to offer because they're a mess. <laughs> so yeah, that's the other problem too is trying to pull up a trade like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it would have to be who, a three who, or four. Who can they give trade. over there? Who can they send right. over there? Right. So and I and I was on my on, the, on my show last um, this weekend. I said if I'm the Lakers or if I'm the yes if I'm if I'm Brooklyn. The only person I want is Anthony Davis, and and I know he's not he wasn't available, but I don't want I don't want Westbrook for Kyrie. I, I want Anthony Davis. Then we can have a discussion. That's what if I was if I was them, I said then we have a discussion. But the Lakers are like, no, nah, we want to keep AD. We want to give you Westbrook. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, you know. But can you imagine that reunion with Westbrook and KD? That that wouldn't. I don't know if that would have been. I think Kyrie and LeBron would could have would work. I think they they think they would. They've done it before. Yeah. Yeah, they've done it before, and I think LeBron will get the best out of Kyrie because I think Kyrie maybe he's come to grips because you know, he left Cleveland, he left Boston. Like there was always drama. He left and he wanted to go to Brooklyn and set this all up and to you know and they wanted to win a championship, but it just hasn't worked. It's been a, it's been a failure so far. You know, Jane Harden leaves and uh, it's just been an epic failure. But yeah. Kyrie, that's the whole situation with him. And it's like I said, it's still not over because you just don't we, we don't know. But I think he's gonna, I think he will play to China get his, you know, his status back up because nobody wanted him. <laughs> and, and this is Kyrie Irving. This is one of the most talented players, but it's everything else that's with him. Yeah, so, it's like yeah. the off the court stuff more yeah. that makes teams just not want to want yes. him to be on their team. And I mean, I witnessed it as a Celtics fan. I mean, people have witnessed it with other teams he's played yeah. on. And it's, it's just unfortunate because the guy is super talented right. so on the basketball court. If, if, if it was just that he didn't have all this off court drama and all these problems that he <laughs> started, I feel like so many teams would love a player like Kyrie Irving. It's just, he's, he's doing this to himself and he's making it so that teams just don't want him. Yeah. Yeah. And his value is, his value has taken a big dip. Because of you know not showing up uh, and or any anything like that, so it's like, are you committed? And the and the Bro- Brooklyn does it. They didn't want to pay him long term, and that's that was the thing. Like you know, so he's betting on himself, which I think he said he had no, he had really no, he had no other option. So that play play the one year in Brooklyn, start, you know, because if if he doesn't if he doesn't play in Brooklyn, if he does get did get traded or he left, you know. Then what they do with KD? That that was the that was the other part of that. Like, what does KD do? <coughs> Excuse yeah, me. What does yeah, KD exactly. Do after that, so it's like, I don't know. Is that that's and KD's just sitting back, like I don't know, like I don't know what's going on. So, and that's when all the Celtics rumors started. Of oh, what if they trade Jalen Brown to get KD, which is just so over. <coughs> Sorry. One. And two, I would not want to do that. I don't want to. I, I don't think trading Jalen Brown is worth it for um, Kevin Durant, as great of a player as KD is. I think um, Jalen Brown is somebody who more fits in with the chemistry of what the Celtics are doing now, and there's so much upside to keeping him. And I don't. I don't even see Brad Stevens even entertaining that possibility of of um, of uh, Jalen Brown for KD because they they'd have to give up a lot. It wouldn't just be giving up Jalen Brown. They'd have to give up some other players that were key to that run that finals run. And I don't think that, that he would necessarily want to do something like that, but that is why this is all still interesting with Brooklyn because the, the Kyrie situation still isn't really fully resolved, even though he technically opted in because he still necessarily might not play there. So then why would, why would KD stay then? Like what happens with him? You know what I mean? So I feel like that whole situation is, is not, might not even be resolved until the season starts. Right. Excuse me. I just got tickled my throat. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, so I guess I'm getting choked up with Brooklyn. It's their, <laughs> in their, in their drama. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a mess over there. And you said if if this situation hasn't resolved, where does KD go? Like, that's – KD's not going to stay with Ben Simmons. <laughs> and that whole thing, there, there's, that's a whole other thing. Like, Ben Simmons, is he even going to play? So, yeah, because once again, like we didn't get to see him play games for them. And everyone's like, oh, wait till Ben Simmons plays. And it's like, well, how do we know how he's going to be with them? Because we haven't seen him play for them yet. So what, we don't necessarily know how he's going to work with the Nets. Yeah, we really don't. And if I like said Brooklyn, they got the ball in their court. They 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 told Kyrie, find a trade partner. They knew they weren't going to get anybody 
for him like that. Like they, they said, we we don't want Lakers trade packages. We want star players coming back. And then with Kevin Durant, it's the same thing. Like you can go too, but it's a mess because they 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 brought this unit together and they wanted them to come back together and they haven't done anything. Like they won one playoff series two years ago. They haven't been able to play together. I think they played Harden, KD, and Kyrie played like 16 games. and Yeah, not a lot. Not a lot of games. And they, they won one playoff series, and then they get swept this season. And the whole thing with the vaccine mandate with Kyrie, Harden leaves because he doesn't want to deal with the whole Kyrie situation. And Kevin Durant's thinking, I haven't talked to them, and I haven't talked to the front office in a while since we've been since we were swept. So – and then the Ben Simmons aspect of it is it's just so there's so much. And then Steve Steve Nash might not be a good enough coach. He's in the middle of all well, this stuff. That's the whole thing, too, is do they have a coaching issue? Because a lot of people were saying that coaching was one of the biggest reasons why they, yeah. you know, kind of choked in the postseason this year. And he ha- they haven't been able to get over that hump since he's been their head coach. So you have to wonder if he's on a tight leash this year and this and he's really on the hot seat, depending on what they do this year, because I'm not convinced that he's the guy either. Yeah, I agree. I don't think he is the guy. And I know love them as a player, like them as a player, but coaching, he might be over his head. Um, but, he, you know, he got a talent. He had a talented roster. It's just that he was a, he's a, he's not able to hone it in, but he's got a roster full of eagles. <laughs> you know, Kyrie's got a big eagle. Um, yep. Ben Simmons, who knows? Like you said, we don't even know if this guy can even is going to even want to play anymore. Uh, the last time we saw him, he was he was giving up layups. He he was like yep. he, he was not even wanted to, to shoot the basketball. So and you know I don't know if he's dealing with physical or mental things until we see him on the court. I think that's where uh, we'll have to wait. He's a wait and see. So I'm not even counting him in. Kevin Durant's the only sure thing, but he can't stay healthy either. So, and health is always an issue with all three of those guys. And this, your, those are your three guys that you're relying on health and 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 he's just showing up. That's <laughs> that's that's a, there's an issue where you have no availability. It's like I don't know. I, I, I don't even if they come together and they and they and they do it. I, I I'm still I don't I'm not convinced that they're. They're gonna win. They're gonna win in the East. I know some people still feel they're the favorites, but no, nah, I'll, I'll take. I'm taking two or three teams, two, three or four teams above ahead of them. We named them earlier. <laughs> I think KD is gonna be get tired of the situation eventually too. Like yeah. even if somehow it gets worked out and Kyrie does stay and he plays this year, I think all of the drama is gonna end up being too much for KD at some point. So you almost have to wonder if he's just reevaluating leaving as it is just because of how much of a mess the situation is. Like if I'm KD, that's not a desirable place to play with all of this outside noise going on with KD and the possible coaching problem and all this other stuff that they have going on over there. So you almost have to wonder what teams KD would be interested in going to if it gets to that point where he doesn't want to play there anymore, which I wouldn't blame the guy if it does get to that point, because I think it's just, it's a mess right now. And if I'm him, I won't, I don't want all those distractions. Right. Then I, I totally agree because he, he said himself that he's monitoring the, you know, the situation. And I think him and Kyrie had a conversation. I think they were conversating all through this, those last few days. And he probably told Kyrie, like, you know, if you do decide to leave, you know, I'd support it. Cause you know, they're, so they're supposedly good friends. And that's the reason why, like, he brought. He wanted KD to come to Brooklyn. Like, let's do this together. Let's let's set this up. So I'm thinking to myself, well, don't leave Kevin Durant hanging. Don't leave him. Don't don't abandon him, uh, or anything yeah. like that. You go. You know, he left Golden State because of this. I say I don't fault him, but I think he he made a mistake leaving the Warriors. I mean, I think there's a possibility he could go end up back there at yeah, some point. That, if wow, yeah. Kind of blows up that, in their face. I wouldn't rule would, out that possibility. That would be something. I'll tell you one thing. If if Kevin Durant is available and they make him available, there's like 27, 28 teams are going to be on the phones calling yep. him. <laughs> um, so and, and, and the Warriors might be the one team that might say, no, we don't need him anymore again. They might be the one and only team. Or they could say, you know, come on over. You can play for – the, you can play for the minimum because you know they don't they don't have the cap space now these yep. days. But yeah, it's like it's <laughs> like wow, let's that would be something. But 
I could see like I knew Portland. I knew I saw I saw Damian Lillard put that picture up of Kevin Kevin Durant <laughs> now. Um I know that Dave's like, I need I want I would yes, let's have let's get him here. You know, I don't think the the Lakers probably would now like somebody like Miami. That would be that, that would be something. Yeah. Uh, Dallas, like with Luca. I mean, that oh, could that'd be, be an interesting combination. Yeah, there was rumors about Phoenix. Uh, you know, I, I would not like him in Miami. No, that would be scary, right? <laughs> yeah. It would be really scary. But if, if he goes to like somewhere like Phoenix, they would have to get, but you have to give so much for, for someone like Kevin Durant, who's still a top two, three player in the league. And uh, Bro- Brooklyn would, they would get so much. They would get draft picks, players. They would just, they would just try to build. From from the ground up, but it would be a, a big time deal because they 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 gave away so many draft picks to to bring these guys together. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's a huge mess in Brooklyn. So they gave I away a lot of it. young talent that they yeah, already had on their talent. roster too. That could have yeah. been part of the future of that team. They they gave up a lot to get those guys there. Yeah, they so. did, and and then like I said, Harden lasted. Not even a full season, really. <laughs> Just to, you know, and he and he left. He was like, I'm, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't blame him. I mean, what do you, what do you think about um, Harden now? Like, like, what do you think of like, you know, his current situation and and like being in Philly? Like, what do you think? Do you think that's a good spot for him? Uh, I, I do. I still think so, even though he didn't play well, and like he's a he's definitely looks like he's going to be a shell of himself now. It doesn't, he doesn't seem like he has that explosiveness anymore. Uh, he's definitely not the Houston James Harden. And I think that's what the Sixers were expecting, but he has to definitely play better, but let's see if he come when he comes, he has to, I think he's got to realize he's not a, he's not a, a, a max guy anymore. So they're not going to pay him max money. They're going to pay him, you know, they'll pay, they'll pay him some money to stay, but they're, he's, he's not going to get 240 million. You know, yeah. not the way he yeah. played and everything too. Yeah. So I think that they give give him another year at the at the very least, uh, with a full year under under the full year with Joel and B because he came after he came after All Star break or right around All Star break. So and then he was he was hurt. Then he came back and they 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 played decent. And then Joel and B gets hurt during the playoffs. So but Harden struggled. So he's I think he's gonna he's got one of those. He's got one of those years where he's got a, like a prove it type of thing himself, but I think he does resign. I just don't think he resigns. He's not going to get that five year max deal. He might sign like a one year or three year deal, uh, but I think he stays in Philly. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And I mean, that's a good point. You like he, you want to see how he does with a full season. Yeah, being able to play a full season there because he just really, with the circumstances, didn't get enough time with those guys over there. I don't think, but I yeah. think it could work over there. It's just, I think it's just more of a time thing right now than anything. So that's why it's going to be another. That's also why it's going to be interesting to see what Philly does next year because um, I'm interested to see him fully healthy and playing with those guys. Yeah, he's got to be locked in healthy. I don't really like the Sixers full roster because I think they're they're missing pieces too, and they're. You know, they had to give up. They gave up some of their depth. They gave a lot of depth when they traded Ben Simmons for for James Harden. Like they, I think losing Seth Curry, and they need they still need shooting, and that's been the Sixers' issue. They they need shooting, and uh, they haven't had that. And I know that Tobias Harris was on the trade block, but he was like their second. <laughs> he was their second or third best player. He finally, I mean, even even with them getting Harden, Harden having the ball, I do like Maxi. I do like Tyrese Maxi. I think he's he he definitely he stepped up and and really played well with Harden in the lineup too. So he he he's he's a keeper and, and you know Embiid, you know what can you say? The guy, I mean, he played with the you know with all those injuries, he had the mask on and and everything too. And he he came he came out there and he was just to, to some the MVP should have been the MVP, you know. So it's not yeah. yep. it's it's not that uh. You know he he's he's uh, an MVP, he's the MVP caliber player. So they have a franchise guy. They just got to build the right mix around him, and hopefully Harden can get some of that back. But I'm not paying him all that money. <laughs> not the way he played. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> right? absolutely not. Yeah, no, that would that would be just ridiculous. No. And I mean, it's it's definitely an unfortunate situation with him, obviously with the injuries and stuff. But he really, in the postseason in general, just doesn't show up. Well, this no, is not. Yeah. You know what I mean? That he just has a history of that, and I think that's why right. it's hard for teams to really want to commit that much money to somebody like him because 
in the most important times of the season is when he doesn't show up. Right, exactly. And this and then I think I think that's where Sixer fans here they got they 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 were they were excited. They should be. I mean, you got you got James Hart. So yeah. they're excited when they got him, but it was it was like, okay, can can he we've seen this story happen so many times. He's gonna flame out in the playoffs and he he, he did. So it, it's it's one of those things you 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 know you you know what you get with Harden when it comes to the playoffs. So that's where I think they have to they got to build the right mix. If they're going to build around Embiid and Harden, they got to have other players. Like I said, I think Maxie's a definitely a, a, a strong, strong enough player um, on this roster. But the other pieces, they need more depth, I think, too. So oh, yeah. I think that's where someone like a P.J. Tucker, I know they've been talking about him, uh, a veteran that can, you know, that can hit shots as one as won a championship and almost made it to another finals. Uh so guys like that, they think the Sixers will pro- they need they need players like that, but they still need some pieces around to build. But I think Harden definitely stays in Philly. I think so too. Yeah. I don't think that's that's a question. I think if yeah. you know if he had played the full season and he didn't feel that positively about it, I think he you know, might leave, but I think he just ha- there. He he probably knows that it just hasn't been given enough of a chance yet with all the right. circumstances. So I don't think I think it would be premature for him to leave. Yeah, very yes, very much so. I mean, I, I don't see anybody um, paying him so much money at all. Like, exactly where too. would he like? Where would he go? And and like, what role? Like, you have the role of point guard here in in Philly. They're gonna like, give you an opportunity. Yeah, they're gonna give you the opportunity. You just have to. I guess he's got to accept that. Okay, I'm not gonna get the max. I probably will get a hundred something million dollars for three years. I'm not gonna get the two hundred million. He should just take it and and just and 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 see what he see what he could do after that the next year. Now, if they struggle next year, then they could think about okay, this is this is not gonna work. But let's let's get a full year under our belts to see how we could play to get how I could play together with 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 Embiid. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you. I'm, I'm with you on that. I think it's going to be really interesting to just see how t- certain teams approach free agency this year. It's always interesting. There's always some surprise signings yes. that do <laughs> happen. And I think it's going to be fun to kind of see, um, you know, how that goes. Um, I think overall, you know, um, this leads me into what I was gonna, what I was going to say um, about the draft. I think kind of um, some teams obviously drafted better than others. I think yeah. an interesting team – to look at this year is the Pistons. I think that Mm. team is actually going to be better this year. And I think that they are kind of trending in the right direction in terms of the moves that they're making. Some of them have been a little bit quiet, but I think, um, you know, that's a team that I'm going to find really interesting this going into this season. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think they were one of the winners as you were saying with the draft, I I think they, and they, they still have a lot of money. Like they, I know they're, 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 they're linked to uh, DeAndre Eaton, but now they might not even be. I mean, they could use, uh, you know, they could use Eaton, but um, they're, they're back court now. Uh, with, with they, 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 you know, they got, they got Ivy, they got Jalen Duran, Duran, um, with Kate Cunningham. Uh, and they're so young. Like they're, yeah. they're such a young up and coming yeah. team. I'm looking at their roster now. Cunningham is 20. Ivy is 20. Uh, Duran is 18. Uh, that's their core right there. Uh, Stewart, they got Marvin Bagley, who's only 23. Uh, they they got a nice young nucleus. So, and even they got Aiden, he's 24. So they're yeah. just they're they're building kind of like how the, the the Warriors do it. They they do it. You you just draft well. The Celtics did. You draft well, and you just develop that young talent. Yep. You don't swing for the fences for. Those, those, you know, those big time free agents that might mess up chemistry. Like the Warriors are the exception because they get, they, they had a chance to get Kevin Durant, but they came off, you know, that was they came off a seventy three win season uh, from that. So it's like, okay, that's a that's a to me that's a once in a lifetime type of thing. You don't see that in the NBA too much at all, where you could get somebody like a Kevin Durant on a team on a great team already, and you get somebody like that. So, but at the end, the the, the Warriors core is their the three that they built, you know, Steph, Clay, and Draymond, and the Celtics had the same thing. Marcus Smart, and uh, you know Tatum, and, and uh, Jalen Brown. So they're building like that. So Detroit's definitely, I think they're they're going to be, I think in a couple of years they they're going to be pretty pretty dangerous team. 
Yeah, I mean, that Jaden Ivey is a really, really fun player, too. I mean, he's yeah. versatile. He's aggressive. He can attack the rim. I think he's somebody, obviously, who, you know, they don't know whether he's really going to pan out as a true point guard. But I think um, I think it's great with that core that they have now. He's somebody that they can develop and work into that chemistry now yeah. um, to be able to be like a Celtics equivalent type of team in the Eastern Conference. Because like you said, building those guys up in their system, establishing that chemistry early on, the more exposure they get, they could be like the Celtics now in the next couple of years with those guys. And obviously Cade Cunningham is great too. So that combination I think is going to be good. So I think that was a great pick for them. I totally agree pick and, and, like I said, they have the cap space if they really wanted to just load up. Uh, but I don't think they really need to. I mean, yes, I don't think they're gonna they're not gonna win immediately this next this upcoming season, but in two years, two, three years, and you know, they all their young players develop. Now they could get with somebody like a Miles Bridges if they can get oh, someone yeah. like him. Uh, I know he's been linked to there, and you know, he's from Michigan. Uh but you know, I don't know if they're going to overpay, but they could get somebody like that. Or like I said, if even if they went before the draft, Aiton was going to be the guy. But now they're they're thinking, okay, we don't really need to. Let's let's just keep developing through the draft, and we'll just develop our own talent, and we'll get veterans here and there. But we don't need to really spend on big time players right now. Yeah, no, I, I like them. I like that pick for them. I think they definitely, like you said, were one of my top um, teams on the list in terms of winners in this draft. I think yeah. that, they, that was a really smart move for them. Um, obviously, Banchero from Duke, it was a great pick. We knew he was probably going to be the first or second pick. I mean, Orlando is, I think that'll be a team where he can really, um, yeah. you know, make an impact right away. Cause I think he's the type of player that's going to make an immediate impact in the NBA. Cause he's just so talented. And I think Orlando needed somebody who could come in and be able to make an immediate impact on that team. Yes. I think that was a, uh, it's interesting that uh, Vincero, you know, there was reports that he could fall to three and then he could go to one. And then, you know, I think home, I think Chet Holmgren from OKC, which I thought they, they did a, a tremendous job too. I think that top three, the, the, the top three teams, um, Orlando, OKC, and Houston, I think they actually made out really well uh, getting yeah. their guys. But then Manchero was the number one pick. I was watching, uh, I think it was right before the draft started, and they were like, oh, the Manchero was like this, like, like, this is the number one pick. And it was like last minute. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Nobody really knew. Like, there was, there was rumors that he, it could be him. But it, I mean, he he fits. He fits Orlando. He he he's ready to play. Now that's why I think that's why they got him. Like he's a guy that's is not going to sit. He's going to come in ready to play he's from a you know from Duke, and it's you know he's got an NBA body. He's ready. He can shoot. He can defend. Uh, so yeah, I think he he was uh, he was definitely worth the number one pick. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, I mean, there were there were questions about what where in that order he was going to go um but you know i think orlando should be really happy with that pick because they know what they know that they're going to get immediate productivity from him which is what they were going for and i think i think even had they picked chet holmgren i i think that he would have been a good pick as well so i think it really yeah. could have gone either way for orlando but i think what they made out with is going to be good for them because i think he's going to be somebody who he's so talented that i think he's just going to be able to make an immediate impact on that team yeah, yeah, he's got good size. He's got a good NBA size and body type, so he he was good. And like you said, Chet Holmgren. I mean, this guy it, it's, it's funny because you know people talk about how skinny he is and his, you know he's real thin and frail, but he's a seven footer that can handle the ball and can shoot. And they said he's tougher than you think. But Giannis Antetokounmpo, I'm not comparing him to him, but Giannis was was very thin, very thin, and um. Yeah. And, and and really, but could jump. It was super athletic. So Chet Holmgren, they, you know, they talk about Kevin Durant. He was super thin. And Durant still hasn't put on a lot of weight. But, you know, he could de- – I mean, the guy could still develop his body. I think he's only 19. So he could still – he's still growing into his body. So uh, he could put on some weight. He's going to – they're going to put him on a weight thing. But going to OKC, I thought it was a was a good pick for them. Um, getting someone like that and that young team, they got so many draft picks. I mean, they they OKC's got so many draft picks from the Westbrook and yeah. uh, Paul George deals, and Jeez. yeah, they really have are loaded on picks. Yeah, they're like when the, when the Celtics. They had 
those draft picks. They was just they kept having all those picks. That Danny each just kept loading up with picks, getting picks and getting picks. And you know, a lot of times he didn't use them. He then it was too late that he used them. And it's like, can you trade them? He was he was so protected on those draft picks. But OKC, I think they had they, just, they said something like. I've read something like 13 picks in the next three years or something like that. Something crazy. So yeah. yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that's yeah. They just traded what stack. they just traded three first round picks of the Knicks. So yeah, they did. Yeah. So it's that like, whole situation with the Knicks was really interesting too on draft night. I know Knicks yeah. fans were not happy about that. No, no, they weren't. And I know a lot of Knicks fans and uh they were not happy. They now nah, they have to get someone because they were they were confused because they thought the Knicks were gonna use their pick. I thought but, they were too. Right, but now you get three protected draft picks, which okay, but okay, he's going to be good in a, in a couple of years, so those draft picks are not going to be as high as they think. So uh, the Knicks, the the Knicks are always the Knicks. They they <laughs> they, they were the to me thing. to me they were probably one of the biggest losers of this draft <laughs> because they 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 trade unless they get someone. I know Jalen Brunson. There's reports now that he actually might go to New York and leave Dallas. So I think that's a good move for them. Uh, but Brunson had that – he had one and a half good years, and now you're going to pay him a hundred and something million. So hopefully he continues to – he to be your fran- one of your franchise guys. If not, then you just overpaid for yep. someone that's just going to be solid but not take you to the next level, which I love Brunson. I love his game. I love what he did with – you know, when Luca was out and when – Luke came back and they, I mean, they got the conference finals. So he had a, he had a tremendous year. So, but going to New York and all that pressure, that's always, it's, it's different when you're now the guy and you, you, and you yep. wasn't. So it's going to be different, but yeah, I think the Knicks, they were one of the, like I said, one of the biggest losers just yeah. going into, you know, after the draft. I was just thinking about it and I was like, oh my gosh, like poor Knicks fans. It's sad how <laughs> they are by now. It's just because yeah. that's what the Knicks do. That's just yeah. like such a Knicks thing to do. And I was like, what are they doing? Right, like, right. In the, in, in the moment, I was like, what is this team doing? <laughs> right. Now, this, they do have, like I said, they got future picks, but yeah. they always, but they have, the, they get those picks and they don't. They don't know what to do with them. Like they don't. I, th- I thought for sure they were going to use that pick this year. I really, really I did, did too. I really did too. It was number one. It was a number eleven pick, and they they could have they could have used it, but like I said, I guess they to put all their eggs in that basket to get somebody like Brunson. Uh, but yeah. it's not a guarantee. He might still resign with Dallas. We don't know. I yeah. mean, I know they're offering a hundred million, but he might resign. I mean, if he wants to continue to keep winning. He was staying down. <laughs> exactly. Why, why, why would you? Why would you want to go to the Knicks? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. That's. I agree with you. I think the Knicks did not do well in this draft, which was not a surprise, really. I think Golden yeah. State did a decent job in this draft too. I think you know they were really just picking depth pieces, and that's kind yeah. of what they did. They got some good players. Um, shout out to my guy Tyrese Martin from UConn who got drafted with the fifty-first pick. Okay. Um, yeah. So I have to give him a shout out for that as a UConn fan. Really happy for him that he got drafted but I think overall the picks Golden State made kind of makes sense in terms of what they are trying to do because they don't really need to do you know yeah. they don't really need to get these high impact players right now no they don't because they as you said they're bringing the most they bring in a lot of their core back I mean Curry seems like he's not getting he's not slowing down any it doesn't seem like that yeah. Clay's yeah. coming Clay's coming back at now a full year so he's you know, four year from the knee from the knee injuries. You know, Draymond, I think yeah. he has he has declined. He's declining, but he still brings that in. You know, he brings some, all those other elements that he always usually brings. That Wiggins, ugh, he was a he was a monster. Oh uh, man, yeah. he was so good, so athletic. Draymond was a man. disappointment in the finals. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Jordan, you, you talked about Jordan Poole, young player. They're bringing Wiseman, who hasn't even played. Um, they got yeah. Kaminga, they got Moody, they got a young, they got they got young guy. They might sign Gary Payton back. They gonna resign him maybe. I mean, yes, the Warriors are they're scary. And I, early predictions, I would I might have to pre- put them back we'll in the see. finals again. <laughs> no, they're they're going to be a tough team out of the West once again. I mean, obviously, it's always 
you never really know when it hits that time. I mean, I didn't expect Phoenix to lose as early on as they did in the yeah. postseason this year. But yeah, Golden State is going to be in really good shape again this year because I don't see them declining at all from this. No, year. I really don't either. Healthy, if they're healthy, and and and, and you know, as long as Curry and, and Clay they play at such a high level, and Wiggins. Uh, the way he played, and like I said, Poole's just going to get better. Those young guys are going to keep getting better. And you just look at the West, yeah, you could say, okay, the Clippers, if they're healthy, but that's that's always a big if. You know, who knows what's going on with the Lakers? They're they're a mess. I feel, I feel for LeBron because it's like Anthony Davis is not available all the time. Westbrook, we you know, he just – he opted in for $47 million, so he's feeling good, but – uh, I don't think okay. Lakers fans are feeling that. Great. Uh, they're not feeling that very well because you can't really trade them. Like it's hard to it's hard to trade them. Nobody really wants that contract. And you, know, I mean, good for him. He opted in. He knew I'm not giving like just like Kyrie. I'm not giving up that much money. No, so I'm not going. I might not. I might not gonna get that again. So yeah, he's, he's just chilling right now. Yeah, he's chilling. He was listening. To, I guess and his Instagram he was listening to Beyonce. He was just he was good. He was he was good. He was dancing, feeling. He was feeling himself. So I mean, hey, forty seven million. You definitely take that. The bad year you had, you take that forty-seven million. But the Lakers are not. I did. Yeah, yeah, Denver healthy, they'll be better. Uh, they'll get their pieces back healthy. Dallas. Uh, I think Dallas will be. Yes, Dallas is gonna be a problem, especially if they yeah. if they oh, lose, yeah. they lose Brunson. Yes, but then they can. They just have to pick up a couple. They got to pick up some pieces. Uh, who knows what's going on with Utah? They got a new coach. They might lose Rudy Gobert. Good question. So, that yeah. seems going to be a question mark going into Yeah, this yeah. Donovan Mitchell, he's at odds with the team. So, yeah. yeah. So, the West, the word, Memphis will be good. Memphis will, will still be good. I think there will be a huge problem, especially if they continue to develop. That's another team that's developing young talent. Yes. And they I got a star. Yeah, yes. Yes. Big, right yes. Super athletic, <laughs> super electric player. They got him. As long as he, stay, he can stay healthy. Memphis will be a huge problem. So, but other than that, the Warriors, to me, so it's early, but they they look like the they look like the favorites in, to come out of the West again. Yeah, I know. I definitely agree with you. I mean, like again with Memphis, that was really good experience for them that they got this yeah. year too, as far as they went in the postseason. And right. like you said, there's a lot of young talent there that they're working on developing. So that's another team that's in a heading on a positive path too. Yeah. But yeah, Golden State is is I don't really see them regressing at all. So they definitely are going to be a problem once again in the West. The East, I still think, is going to be really really tough. Yeah. because there's so many good teams in the Eastern Conference right now, and that's why it was so impressive that the Celtics did get out of the East because you knew whoever came out of the Eastern Conference, it was not going to be easy to get there yeah. this year, and I think it's going to be a similar situation next year. Yes, definitely. It's going to – yeah, the East is, like we said, it's, it's so tough at, up at, at the top because uh, I think you said the Bucks. I know they're – Giannis, you know he's probably in the gym now working on his game. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, he was very upset because it was – uh he 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 thought that I thought I I def, I had predicted them to get to the finals, but I mean they were close. Um, and you know they they just need a, I think they need to tinker that that you know with that roster a little bit too. But uh, yeah, Giannis is you know he's going to be hungry. He just saw Warriors win. He's probably hungry, thinking, okay, we need to get back here again. But as you said, Celtics are going to be improved. There's going to be all these top teams in the in the East. It's going to be it's going to be tough in that Easter conference. Is going to be really tough. And that was an unbelievable series that Celtics Bucks series too. Was. That was such a really good like evenly matched series. Um, you know. You have to wonder how that series would have turned out if Middleton had been playing. I still yeah. think it would have been just as close and just as competitive. Me too. Um, but I think that was an unbelievable series. I think the Bucks will be back next year too. There's going to be a lot of good teams once again in the East. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's going to be that's why free agency is going to be so fun to just see how teams handle that this year and what the Eastern Conference looks like going into the season next year. I mean, I know there were Celtics fans that weren't happy with their draft pick. I didn't mind it at all, though. Like, I'm going to say that I was fine with it. I mean, they selected J.D. Davison, a point guard out of Alabama. Um, he struggled a bit last year, but, um, you know, he's somebody that's going to take a lot of development. He's somebody that they're really, really going to have to work with. He's not going to see minutes for a while, I don't think, right. with this team. But, again, they – first of all, with a late pick, as late of a pick as the Celtics had, they were picking 53. You're not going to get a really good – key player who's going to contribute right away. Right. That so I don't know what people were really expecting, but also I'm okay with that because they don't need somebody like that right now. They have somebody that 
they can hopefully, you know, um, build into their system, kind of help him develop that he could maybe turn into the future, kind of like the core that they have now, somebody who can contribute down the road, but is going to need some work. But that's fine, honestly, because I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the pick. I don't really see an issue with it. I think some people wanted somebody who can make an impact now, but the Celtics are another team that didn't really need that, nor yeah. were you, could you really expect them to get that with as late of a pick as they had. So I wanted to just kind of go on record and say to um, other Celtics fans that I really didn't mind the pick. I think down the road, he's somebody who could be impactful as long as they develop him. Yeah, it was it's it's a it's it's one of those picks when you when you pick that late and that's the only pick you have you you said you're not going to get an impact player immediate impact player it's it's more of just you're getting for depth and you're getting you know you're trying to get some value uh, later on and like I said it's a developmental player usually when it's down that low what is that low of a pick it's, it's you're not like I said you're not getting a a super impact player even second round picks are usually developmental players and then they they build into something you know i mean like a draymond green like you get guys who was who was selected or uh, jamin like uh, um go back to ginobili like he was these were second round picks and you just you, 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 they, they 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 develop so i mean you don't know you swing for the fences at when you yeah. when you're picking that late so i, I i'm not mad at those those late picks like that because you know you're swinging you can't, the, be. you can't be no you're not like I said you're not getting a huge impact player yet but they could turn into a good rotational player yeah exactly exactly I totally agree with that that's why I think people need to relax about those late picks yeah like, the Celtics <laughs> are what they are they're not really gonna budge with a lot of that core right now I don't think and this is right. somebody who down the road might end up being a really impactful player for this team you you don't know and if it doesn't work out it doesn't but they don't know that right now. You know, but um, it's right. it's a depth piece and it's somebody who they can kind of develop into their system to hopefully contribute down the road to the success that the Celtics are having. Yeah, right. And if it doesn't work out, it, it's, it's not like it was a huge investment. They, 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 they'll they just develop it for a couple of years and then maybe they make an impact. Maybe they don't. If they don't, they just have to look somewhere else. And, you know, and, and then, like I said, it's a late, it's a late round pick. You have to. You know, sometimes late round picks blossom, and some it takes just some time, and then that's what I think that's what they're just what they because like I said, something they need, they did they they have other needs, and he's a point guard too, so he's a ball handler. We were just talking about that. He's a young ball handler. He's not going to see the rotation, uh, probably until for a year or two. So uh, unless he really, unless he really is like really develops quickly, then he starts seeing the rotation. Then he starts seeing some minutes later in the year, but it's a it's a year or two. Uh, project is this process. Yep, it is. It definitely is a process. And so I think people were probably just a little overreactionary in the moment with that, but <laughs> yeah. I really don't have a problem with the pick. There's a lot of upside to it. It's kind of yeah. a low, it's kind of a low risk, high reward type situation there. Right. You, know? and right. you don't know what you're going to get, but if it doesn't work out, like you said, it's not like they gave up anything for somebody like that. Then you just develop him for a couple of years. If you don't see him working out in the system, then you make moves down the road. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you didn't you just you cut bait. It's just like any late pick in, in NFL drafts. It's like, you know, some you know you might find that gym there that that really yeah. does well, but then you might find you know that they're a six seven round pick, uh, and then it doesn't work out. It's like okay, maybe they'll work out with another team. We we develop, we try to develop them, and it just hasn't worked. Then you just you cut bait. That's the way it is, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's so true. You said that really well. And I think that goes for a lot of those late round picks. Um, I think it was yeah. definitely an interesting draft overall. I think some of the moves were um, not surprising. Some of them might have been a little bit. Um, yeah. I think, you know, it's going to be interesting to see kind of how teams approach now the offseason free agency. There's a lot that can be done um, with a lot of teams. But I appreciate you discussing this um, all with me and hopping on the show. It's really always a pleasure to have you on Boston Balling. Um, before we before we go though, can you just let everybody know one more time how they can follow you and how they can follow your show? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. I, I appreciate you um, always inviting me, and then we just like you said, we just bounce off the ideas and bounce off the you know the topics and and just talking. It doesn't even just yeah. like, the hour goes by so quickly, but I I always have fun jumping on the show. But yeah, you can follow the show at Get the Real Deal. On Twitter, um, if you just Google the real deal with Courtney Harden, you can find it on 
all podcast platforms again roku spotify spreaker google play apple all those uh so yeah all the episodes are there you can find the audio the video everything there and like i said you guys want to be a guest you can find me any on i'm on i'm on social media all the time so i'm always looking posting uh looking for guests reaching out to guests and everything too but got nothing this week took a taking a week off because of the fourth of july holiday coming up so uh just taking me a break uh from i hope you enjoy that That'd yeah nice. taking taking a break from the pot from podcast for this week and then i'll be back next week with uh with some more episodes so yeah yeah so definitely find find all the content like i said the real deal uh google that on on uh yeah just google the real deal according to Arden. <laughs> that's awesome everyone definitely check it out it's a great show i love it he has some really interesting guests that he brings on um i hope you all have a great fourth of july weekend like i said let's pray that the weather is good for everybody yeah. um everybody can do stuff outside that would be nice um appreciate you all for tuning into the show as always hope you all have a great rest of your week and i will talk to you all next time on boston balling have a good night everyone bye guys